Hello stallions, Miss Dubleski here. So this week we're celebrating Earth Day. And Earth Day is a time where we celebrate and think about the ways that we can keep our Earth and our world healthy. So that means that we wanna protect everything that's going on outside, all our natural resources, like trees and plants that live outside. We also wanna keep the animals healthy and make sure that they have places to live and eat and our water. So one place on our earth that we really need to keep healthy is our oceans. We don't live by any oceans, but if you've ever been to a beach um, with like lots of sand, you've probably been by the ocean. So I'm gonna read you a book about the ocean and it's actually about one type of animal that lives in the ocean and we're gonna get to see some beautiful places in the ocean and what it looks like and some of the animals and waters that we're trying to protect. This book is called Into the Sea by Brenda Z. Guberson and illustrated by Alex Berenzi. Let's see what it's about. That's a really pretty picture of the ocean, isn't it? Look at all these. These are called coral and all of that is a living part of the ocean too and there's Turtles and fish. I wonder what else we're going to get to see. Into the sea. Ooh. That is pretty cool. I wonder what those little guys are. Tap, tap, scritch. The tiny sea turtle is the last hatchling to break out of her leathery egg and crawl up the sides of a sandy nest. She is not much bigger than a bottle cap and would make a good meal for a hungry seabird or a crab. But at this moment, at dawn, the crabs are resting in muddy burrows and the beach is quiet and empty. The turtle smells the sand and stares at the bright moonlight that glistens across the ocean. She rests a moment and then, like a wind-up toy, pulls herself quickly across the beach with her flippers. Always, she heads straight for the silvery moonlight. Clack, click, clack. The crab pops out of its burrow and sees the dark, moving shape. Just in time, the turtle reaches the edge of the water. A gentle wave splashes across her back and carries her into the sea. Uh-oh, that crab got really close to getting that turtle. Instinctively, the turtle knows how to paddle with her flippers and dive beneath the surface. She's still swimming hard when the sun moves into the sky. Every few minutes, she comes up for a breath of air. Her eyesight is much better than the, in the water. She sees a jellyfish, a starfish, and a barracuda with a big mouth. None of them see the turtle. Her white underside blends in with the shimmering white surface of the ocean. Look at her up there. She is kind of hard to see. Splop. The turtle comes up for air in a patch of sargasm. Weed. A tiny crab and a water strider ride on the floating raft. Below, a sargasm fish uses the plant for camouflage. They all drift with the wind and the current while the weeds hide them from the sharp-eyed seabirds above and the hungry fish below. The little turtle floats around in the clump for several months, eating tiny plants and animals called plankton. As the turtle grows, her shell grows with her and gets a little harder. She likes to dive into the long streams of seaweed that grow in the ocean bottom. There, mussels and seahorses sift water for plankton to eat. When the strong current comes up, the seahorses grab onto the seaweed with their tails, while the mussels hold onto the rocks with thread-like feet. But the little turtle is not yet strong enough to swim against this current. She drifts away with the moving water. Oh, there she goes. The turtle spends her first winter in a warm tropical sea full of brilliant colors and creatures with big mouths. Like all sea turtles, she cannot pull her head and flippers into the sh her shell for protection. But she finds many places to hide in the coral reef. When a butterfly fish swims in her direction, she darts under a ledge. This fish has a dark tail spot that looks just like an eye. The turtle watches closely to see which end is the front and which is the back. I wonder, where is that fish they called the butterfly fish? It says, 
This fish has a dark tail spot that looks just like an eye. Can you spot the fish with a dark spot and its tail that looks like an eye? There it is! That must be the butterfly fish. Pretty cool. By now, the turtle has been in the sea for over a year. She is as big as the seabirds and most of the fish. She has developed strong swimming muscles and swims four times faster than a human. Wow, so they swim so much faster than we can. The turtle has no teeth, but bites off pieces of seaweed with the sharp ridges of her jaw. She spends two whole months eating her way through a rich, wavy garden of seagrass. Wow. So look, there's grass that lives under the sea too. It looks a lot different than the grass that we see outside, huh? After several more years, the turtle grows into one of the biggest creatures in the sea. Sharks, however, are still a danger. When one comes near her feeding area, she swims out into a warm current far away from the shallow ocean shelf. She crosses deep, deep water where bottom and seaweed cannot grow. There is not as much to eat in the middle of the ocean, but she continues her long journey, living on the extra fat in her body. That's scary. I would swim away from that guy, too. Even a big turtle can get very tired. Sometimes she stops to sunbathe on the surface of the water. The sunlight discourages the barnacles and marine grasses from growing on her shell. She likes to float for hours in the midday sun. A remora with a special fin on its head attaches to her underside for a free ride. Then a tired brown booby flutters down to join them for a rest on the surface of the ocean. Oh my goodness, so she's got a fish who's hanging on tight so that he can catch a ride and a bird who wants a ride. Seems like that turtle picked up a few hitchhikers. The turtle hears humpback whales singing in the sea. She dives underwater and the bird flies away. She passes a humpback swimming in slow circles and blowing a ring of thick bubbles. Many small fish get caught in the swirling, whirling water of this bubble net. With a strong push of its fluke, the whale comes up through the middle and swallows hundreds of trapped minnows in one huge gulp. The turtle swims swiftly away, but the remora stays behind to catch a ride on the whale. So look, that little fish isn't attached to her anymore. It's going to go cling on to this whale to get a ride. At 300 pounds, the turtle is a fully grown adult. She finds a current that seems familiar to her and follows it back across the ocean. The turtle swims deep under the water for almost two hours, but before she comes up to breathe, she swims below a fishing boat. Suddenly, she finds herself trapped in a net. Each time she tries to swim away, her flippers scrape the sides of the net and almost get tangled in the woven ropes. She bumps into metal bars, clunk, Shrimp and small fish swim through the slots between the bars, but the turtle is much too big. She swims over them and finds an escape door at the bottom. Soon, she's at the surface of the ocean, taking in big gulps of fresh air. Uh-oh, she really almost got caught by those nets. After a rest, the turtle follows the same familiar current through the sea. She swims many hundreds of miles in this flow of water. Finally, she crosses over the top of one ocean mountain and along the steep side of another. When she pops her head out of the water, she sees the top of the second mountain. It is a round island with a warm, sandy beach. There are many other turtles just like her in the water. Some are male and some are female. After more than 20 years in the sea, the turtle returns to the land. She waits until nighttime when the tide is high to come in. She is slow and awkward as she pulls her huge body up onto the sandy beach. She does not see well on land. Tears stream down her cheeks as they do in the water to help her body get rid of extra salt from the sea. She pokes her nose into the sand. The turtle seems to know that she has come back to the same island where she was born. Slowly, she drags herself across the beach. When she gets near a small bush, she stops to rest 
and then begins to dig a nest in the sand with her flippers. Thump, scrape, whoosh, wheeze. It is hard work as she scoops out a hole for her body and a deeper chamber for her eggs. Sand flies everywhere, covering her back and head. She works for three hours, laying over 100 eggs and then covering them with sand. I wonder what her eggs are going to do deep in that hole on the beach. Once again, the turtle crosses the beach. Waves sweep the sand off her back and lift her into the water. Her huge body feels lighter and she sees clearly again. She leaves the sandy nest behind her. If nothing destroys the eggs, her babies will hatch in two months. Perhaps one or two will get past the crabs and the seabirds and the fish and the fishing nets and, like their mother, will return to lay eggs on the same sandy beach before making their way back into the sea. And, and on this last page, we can see there's all the different types of turtles right here. Isn't that neat? Let's see. This one is a leatherback turtle. It looks pretty big. This one is called a green turtle. That's kind of funny. It doesn't look like it's green, does it? Hmm. You'd think a green turtle would actually be green. This one looks like it's a brownish color, huh? This one is a loggerhead turtle. This one is a flatback turtle. Then a hawksbill turtle. A Kemp's Ridley turtle. And all the way down here, an olive Ridley. All right, and on this very last back page, it's telling us some things about turtles. So let's read it and see what we can find out. There. It says, fast in the sea, slow on the sand. It is a difficult and delicate venture for the sea turtle to leave the ocean and lay her eggs on land. In the exposed setting of sand and shallow water, things can go wrong for the turtle, her eggs or hatchlings. Centuries ago, settlers, explorers, and pirates landed on New World beaches and discovered the turtle nesting sites. They ate turtle eggs, grabbed the slow plodding females as they crossed the sand, and caught turtles that came up for air or bass on the top of the ocean. Turtles were flipped on their backs and stacked alive on ship decks until fresh meat was needed by the cook. It didn't take long for the population of sea turtles to decline dramatically. There are other problems for these reptiles. Some turtle eggs are crushed by vehicles, while others are eaten by dogs, raccoons, jaguars, and snakes. Hatchlings get caught by birds, crabs, and fish, and larger turtles are killed so that fancy items may be made from their shells. Oh, that's not very good for the sea turtles. It says that sometimes people kill the turtles because they, they want to use these shells that they have to make things. Oh, that's sad. And then there are many turtles that die in fishing nets or after swallowing plastic or other debris in the ocean. That's why we want to make sure that we're trying to recycle our plastic or reusing it. Today, sea turtles and their eggs are protected by law, but they still face the loss of their nesting places. Many resorts, homes, and hotels have been built on nesting beaches. Still, turtles return to these beaches and lay eggs if they can find stable, moist sand above the high tide mark. If the turtles hatch, they can be confused by all the lights around them and may crawl toward the brightness of a resort or highway instead of the sea. Uh-oh. There used to be millions of sea turtles, and now there are only several thousand. However, by working to protect nesting sites, provide safe care for the eggs, and establish new nesting beaches, people hope to dramatically increase the number of turtles in the sea. The end. All right, friends. I hope that you enjoyed this book as much as I did. It's a really, really great one. Have a great week celebrating Earth Day, and I will see you later. Goodbye.